live and local every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Well, Jay, wiffle ball getting some mention as a potential Olympic sport. Wiffle ball played at a high level is um, it's very pitching dominated. It's not the most visually exciting sport other than watching the people just flail. But uh, I'd be for that. It's a drive, guys, here. It's Jay and Whitey today. Uh, we're going to turn our attention now for a moment to the National Basketball Association. Um, the off season is hitting the doldrums a little bit, but we're, we're still anxiously anticipating whatever's coming next. Our next guest covers the Trailblazers for the Oregonian, uh, Aaron Fentress with us. How are you today, Aaron? I'm doing good, man. I'm on a little mini vacation up in the Seattle area with my new grandbaby hanging out. And y'all trying to bother me to talk about these sorry Blazers. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Just Congratulations, kidding. man. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, our uh, our grandson just rolled over today for the first time. So there you go. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, are the Blazers going to roll over on uh, Jeremy Grant? <laughs> I mean, there's a report that right. uh, you know, okay, it's going to take two first round picks to get him. Do we know how many teams might be interested? Uh, do we believe uh, Sacramento could be one of them, Aaron? Uh, I don't know who's giving up two first for Jeremy. I, you know, when I, you know. It's one of those things where, you know, they want two for us first round pick. Well, they probably want three or four or five or six, you know, sure. but wanting what you get are two different things. They just package two firsts with Brogman, whom they want to get one or two first for to get Denny Adva. So are you really going to come back and get two for Jeremy, whom you got for one pick and a trade exception two years ago? So now he's two years older. He has four years remaining on this huge deal that's going to pay him 30 plus a year. I don't know who's pointing up two picks for that. And even a contender, any contender that might think he's a, a key piece for them, you must already have a pretty high payroll. So do you want to take on that type of salary for a guy who's somewhat one-dimensional at four? Because he doesn't really rebound. The defense is okay. He's a great guy, though. Like, if he does go down there, you guys will absolutely love him. Great person. Love covering him. I just don't see how two first is a thing. Hmm. But we'll see. Aaron, I, I guess in your best vet, your best guest, even though you're on vacation, and I love that. Definitely hate to uh, interrupt. He's not even that. listening to the question. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm with you. I wouldn't be. I, I'm kind of checked out. <laughs> does Does Jeremy move at all this off season, or is that someone who's probably going to be a prime target for trade deadline? You know, he doesn't have to move this off season. I would be surprised if Jeremy or Anthony Simons, that one of the two is not moved. Um, I was told that that's definitely the goal, that one of the two would probably be gone before training camp. Both being gone, and eh, that might be different. They obviously have time. Like, you know, they can wait to the trade deadline and see if someone else will offer more or what have you. Um, so I think eventually both, like to me, what they're doing right now, making it clear that Scoot Henderson and Shade Sharp are the centerpieces of the rebuild. And now, of course, they love Klingon. That means you've got to move Anthony, especially because you've committed to two guards. And Anthony is better than both of them right now. Right? So you have to start Anthony or it's going to look silly. If they don't start Anthony, he's going to probably demand a trade. So he's got to go at some point soon. And then Grant, you can probably wait a little while longer because he's clearly one of your, oh, he's your best forward by far. So you can start him and justify that, and it's not a big deal. But – as cool of a guy as Grant is, Grant doesn't want to waste his 30s, what years he has left on a team that's actively tanking again and might even tank again the next year. He wants to go somewhere where he can win. So both of them will be – I predict both of them will be gone by next summer. It just, just depends on when it happens. Aaron Fentress is with us. He covers the Blazers for the Oregonian and also uh, Oregon Live. Aaron, who in the West, in your professional opinion, has had the best offseason so far? Ooh, man, that's making me have to think. I'm, I'm sorry. To, I didn't mean to. I'm going to try not yeah. to do that. Um, I'll bet, <laughs> wow, that's an interesting question. I don't like the Westbrook move to Denver. That doesn't make sense to me. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does it make sense to you guys, though? Like, Westbrook to Denver? It just mm. seems like he's such an inefficient player to put on a very efficient team. I don't know. It just seems weird. Yeah. I like Clay Thompson to Dallas. Like, I, I think that's a really good move for them. Um, so... Without a deep dive thought into this, I, I'll go with Dallas. Okay. Now, by the way, I'm with you completely on Westbrook. It almost reeks of desperation. Like, hey, 
maybe this will work. And they, you know, a year ago, it's like, wow, maybe they'll win two in a row. Now it seems like things are going in the wrong direction for that team. Yeah, it's just a bizarre move because it, it, are they going to start him? Like, if you start him, to me, that's a disaster because he still thinks he's MVP Westbrook and he'll still take bad shots. Right. And he'll still commit silly turnovers and do silly things where the thing that makes Denver so good is that their centerpiece player is such an efficient talent who makes great decisions. And so you want to put shooters around him with smart players because he can make all of them better. But if you take someone like that, that's just, to me, seems like it's going to bring you down a bit. So a little surprised by that. But I do, I think Dallas is a great fit for play. Aaron, someone that, you know, some people around here keep their eye on due to his uh, brother being Keegan Murray. Chris Murray, his rookie year last year, you had an opportunity to cover him. What's your thoughts on Chris and his progression here, and what might you expect to see from year two on him? Yeah, very interesting because he just had a really poor summer league. Uh, shooting percentages were bad across the board. He did rebound decently, I think seven per game, second on the team. Uh, but his shooting percentages were under 40 for, from – the field and I think under 30 on three I think he only average like seven points or something like that and it's for a guy who's 24 a lot of time in college played a bunch of games last year on a team that was tanking so he had a lot of experience going into the summer league and I kind of expected him to have a big session and he played worse than he did last year when he's a rookie so pretty disappointed there um you know they liked him when they drafted him haven't seen a ton of growth yet still you know a lot of time to work with there but clearly they've been making moves to find other fours. Like if you think Chris Murray is a future starting four, you maybe don't go after someone like Denny, right? Um, so I, I think it's clear that they don't view him as a definite starter down the road, but maybe still a rotational piece. Aaron, uh, Aaron Fentress is with us from the Oregonian. You addressed some of this in your previous answers, but I'm just wondering here, Grant, Jeremy Grant, how does he fit into their timeline? And more importantly, and again, I know you addressed some of this, but yeah. how soon are they looking – at actually contending in the West. <laughs> Let's just say that I have no plans on finding myself covering <laughs> playoff basketball. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> for the next for the next three summers. Um, okay, so Grant Grant doesn't fit the timeline at all at all. Grant fit a game timeline, right? Yeah. The only reason why they signed them, even though Dame was basically saying trade me when they did, was one, they hoped that would be a nugget to maybe give them some more time to try and build around Dame. But Two, you had to spend the money anyway, right? So you, you got to spend the money. You might as well spend the money on uh, an asset, someone that you can flip later because you're trying to flip. You're trying to get picks. You're trying to do all these things. So that's why you kept them. But he hasn't set their timeline at all. He's he's 30. Yeah. And uh, Sharp is 20 and Scoot just turned 20. Uh, and those are your two main building blocks. And now uh, Klingon, I think, is 21. So they're all, you know, 10, nine years younger than him so he doesn't fit at all like he just simply does not so that's why there's no doubt they're gonna get, well they're looking to move him right now and they'll probably try and get rid of him by next summer so maybe when they're celebrating the 50th anniversary of bill walton's <laughs> well, here's, title yeah. maybe, well here's the yeah. deal like last year uh they tried to pretend in the offseason even after they made his trade demand when they brought back grant and they brought back Seibel. And I asked straight up in, in, at, at Summer League, I'm like, what's the plan? Is this, is this a sign that you're going to try and make the playoffs next year without Dame? Or are you guys going to have to tank? And I said, to keep up teams like OKC and Houston, right? Who have stockpiled his picks and his young, this young talent. And they, you know, oh, no, we're trying to win. We're trying to win. But then when the season started, they started preaching patience because they knew yeah. that it was going to be a mess. And it was a mess. And they actively tanked the last three months. Well, this year, they're, they're, coming, look, they're coming in. The over under for wins is 21. In Vegas, it was 28 last year. It's 21 in part because it's been pretty clear they're going to tank because they want a shot at Cooper Flag. They want a shot at least at the top five pick in what's supposed to be a great draft, right? Yeah. So they're for sure tanking this year. And then if you come back the next year with a bunch of 20, 21, 22 year olds, you're automatically going to tank because they're not going to win right away. Right. So I'm looking at two more, at least two more lottery seasons with this team. Yeah. And that would be that would be five in a row. That means you're going to be at the uh, the the combine and the NBA draft for the next two or three years. You might as well go and punch your tickets. (laughs) See, I'm telling you, it'll be the 50th anniversary of the 77 Blazers, and maybe by then, maybe Maybe by maybe. maybe. Aaron, before we let you get out of here, man, uh, two questions. First of all, I got to ask about Seattle. As a Portland guy, what do you do in Seattle, and why do you go to Seattle for your vacation? And the second question is: Is DeAndre Ayton has got like the most disrespectful 
you know, big men, it feels like in the, in the game. I, I, I like DeAndre Ayton's skill set. I think he's on top of what he needs to be. I don't know what is the problem and why people don't like him. What's your thoughts on DeAndre Ayton now that he's been up there? Well, first of all, the main reason we came up here is because my granddaughter is up here. But when we do make many trips up here in the summer, we usually will go check out the Mariners or go to the uh, waterfront, things like that. Sure. Um, but mainly it's because my granddaughter is up here. Otherwise, we'd, we'd have gone somewhere. What's her name? Yeah, what's more? Uh, Chloe. Chloe yeah. Nicole Centris. She's uh, five months now. Anyway, um, as far as Aiden, so the, the deal with Aiden is that he's just – he's one of those guys who – he isn't a bust. Like, he's number one pick. He's a bust as a number one overall. I think especially when you look at Luca and Trey Young in that draft, right? He has not lived up to that. And I think what frustrates people with him is that you see the talent. You see the ability. So he comes to Portland. Everyone's excited that maybe he's going to turn things around here, sort of like Lowry did when Lowry got to Utah, his third stop, and he finally slipped the switch, right? Mm-hmm. But he comes out, and he's, not, he's just mediocre. He's passive. He's not really doing much. Now, he said he was dealing with some personal issues. I heard a story about that during the season. And then the last two months, he went off. And I give him credit for playing really, really well with a bunch of kids. He's, he's playing with like three summer league guys and then and scoot. And so who know he promises dominating is here to stay. And he's going to come out like gangbusters next year. And if he does, that's great. If he doesn't, again, the frustration is if you know a guy has 27 and 12 abilities and he's giving you 20 and nine, it's annoying, mm-hmm. right? Because you know he can be better. And Phoenix Suns will t- fans will tell you that was a thing down there. And that's going to be the thing here, unless he delivers. Aaron, uh, belated congrats on the granddaughter. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the vacation. Hope to talk to you again soon. Sounds great. Thank Take you. Care. We appreciate it. That's a scoop on the Blazers. So, Jay, just reading between the lines, as far as he knows, there's no reason to think the Kings are in on Jeremy Grant. No, it doesn't yeah. seem like it. And, you know, the report came from Yovan Buha, who covers the Lakers. Right. So it sounds like they have their ear to the, you know, beat of yeah. the drum right now. But it's someone that, you know, Kings fans have been looking for, mm-hmm. you know, um, and someone, you know, at one point in time, he led your summer uh, targets, you know, as far as for the Sacramento Kings. And so it, it's interesting to see how you have two different teams like the Lakers, who seem like they're hunting and pecking for anything, they scratching and point, clawing. Looking for something the, significant. Yeah, where the Kings, you know, who signed DeMar DeRozan, kept Malik Monk. They they look to be playing the patient game and waiting to see when the smoke clears and then Monty's going to pop out like Kendrick Lamar and do what he does. Joel Embiid, he doesn't fit with Team USA, at least not yet, but does he deserve to be booed by the French? Next with the Drive Guy, Sacktown Sports. Pops a 